please find your seat. I have the amazing privilege and honor this morning in introducing our guest speaker. But before I do that, Pastor Steve, if you do not know, he is currently on a missions trip and outreach called Athletes in Action. He's in Spain currently. He's uh, meeting up with coaches, doing some really, really fun stuff with some basketball clinics, preaching over there, and it's awesome. He sends his love, keep him in prayer. But this morning we have an awesome, awesome, awesome guest speaker. I've been in the first two services and it's just been amazing so far. His name is Pastor Great. Hold on before you give a round of applause. He's an amazing man of God who loves God passionately and he loves the younger generation. He has a ministry called J12 and his heart is to reach a generation before they are lost and so we just can we just give the big new life welcome to this amazing man of God pastor Gray Johnson a friend of new life <laughs> thank, you, thank you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah well I have to admit you were the loudest response to me coming up so of today so far so I feel good I think I'll stay <laughs> oh thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just love you, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather as the corporate church, so to speak. We know our domestic church is at home, but Lord, this is where we gather as the forever family. Lord, where we gather as the forever family of God, for we will live together forever. Lord, forever we will live together, ruling and reigning with Christ, because you are going to restore all things according to your word. Amen. You're going to renew all things. You're going to resurrect things. You're going to, well, you're just the God who reads everything. And we thank you for that. Lord, it's too good to be true, really. We, we can hardly contain the future. It's just beyond our understanding. And according to your word, it's, it's beyond our imagination. We've never been able to even ask for the things that you have for us, for they're too amazing. So, Lord, we thank you that we get to gather before we were with you in heaven someday, before we rule and reign with Christ for eternity. We get to practice on earth, practice our ability to know you, follow you, rule and reign with you and know you. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price so that we can enter in. That, that we're not in an entrance exam season. But in fact, you've already paid our entrance fees through your death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. So we don't have to wonder if we're in. We have your name. We're part of your family. And we receive that today. Lord, every service has a different take on it. As you know, you're the orchestrator of every time we gather. Every service has its own unique anointing, it seems. And, and so, Lord, we ask that what happened in the first two services, Lord, would be different than what happens in this one. Because you're always the God who gets to the point. Your word is a sword, not a board. It doesn't generally pulverize us. It speaks to our issues. And so today, Lord, I pray that you would read our mail. And that we would just sense that you've been with us all week. So, Lord, take your word and make it living and active, we pray now. In the name of Jesus. And everybody in the house said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. You know, some may wonder if with this kind of professional atmosphere of phenomenal music and talent and gifting and technology that in fact it would be a, a show. But as I was reading in the word just now, Elisha called for a musician and then this hand of the Lord came upon him when the musician showed up. So I want you to know that this is ministry and that in fact there is a phrase in the Bible, songs of deliverance. Not sermons of deliverance, it's songs of deliverance. And sermons bring deliverance, but songs also bring deliverance. The sound of a song, the, the resonance that comes from even a musical instrument. When David played the harp, the spirit of the Lord would come upon him. Come on, amen. 
So we thank God for these musicians that have honed their skills so that we can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but I know this. Amen. I know this about David. When David took on Goliath, he, he prophesied his demise before it happened because this kid was on it. And he looked at Goliath and says, I'm going to take your head from you. It'll be a great weight loss program. <laughs> Within moments, you'll lose 30 pounds. So, Because he had a big head. <laughs> Not only physically, he had a big head. He was defying the armies of the living God. That's a, that's a big head. And David, David says, I'm going to come to you with the name of the Lord of the God of the armies of Israel. You come to me with a sword and a spear, but I'm coming to you with the name. So you're coming with physical stuff. I'm coming with a confession. And my confession is the name of the God of Israel whom you defiled. So here we go. So what killed Goliath? What killed Goliath? The name of the Lord and the skill of a slingshotter. Something tells me if he didn't practice his skills, God would have had to get involved in a big way. <laughs> that stone is going left. <laughs> I think he had the skill. So bring your skill, skill set to the table when you serve the Lord. It will be the Lord that brings down the giant, but it'll be your skill set that's included. Okay, let's go home. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to have fun this morning. We had a powerful time in the first two services. And I just believe this church is going to new places in Christ. Your influence is increasing. The last time I was here was April 2017. And since I've come back, I can tell there's increase. There's increase of authority. There's increase of uh, just uh, depth of spirit, I believe, and even people. I mean, there's just been a growth in the house. And there's a reason for that. And that is because somebody's paid the price for that to happen. That would include leadership. That would include people that volunteer. Yesterday, I spoke to, you know, a, a, it was 120 were RSVP of leaders that serve the younger generation in this church. And I'm going to tell you what, it's not easy to serve kids. Let's move on. Come on now. You know what they're like at home. Can you imagine what they're like here? You know what I'm saying. So thank God that this church has put an emphasis upon the younger generation. Today's word, though, is for us as adults, for us as young lives. I see some young people in the house. Right on, bro. <laughs> but I'm always attracted to the younger generation because they have more future than past. <laughs> and because of that, we want to send you into your future. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to see the title of today's word on the screen. When you see it, I want you to shout it, okay? Not, not, not horribly loud, but, but somewhat, because they're loud, so you can be loud too, okay? So, let's do it. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ask! Oh, that was slow. Was I fast? Okay, let's try it again. One, two, three. Ask! Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it says up there. Ask. Let me tell you what. There's a lot of asks in the Bible. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. Jesus said to a man who was blind, ask, what do you want me to do for you? You know, we're always asking God, what's your will? And he's asking us, what's yours? <laughs> now, I, now, please understand, we come under his lordship. But God needs something to work with. Don't be a parked Christian. Pretty hard to direct a parked car. Pretty hard to direct a parked, to a parked Christian. But we fall under that trap. Oh, God, I'm so afraid I won't do your will. So I'm going to freeze. <laughs> and God says, I, I need something to work with. So today we're going to talk about the power of asking. And we're going to read the scripture together. And you're going to see it on the screen. And could we read it strong together? Let's read everyone. Let's start. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. Let's stop right there. You see, in the Catholic tradition, there's a lot of back and forth, you know, where they'll say scriptures in response. So I'm just loving this Catholic moment. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, a bunch of evangelical rock, rock people, and uh, meaning we're like, we, we came, came here and we're just kind of hip and cool. I just love the fact we're reading the word together. Let's continue. 
I don't know where we were. Let's begin with, and he will answer. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. When you see ask in the next slide, let's say I'm strong, the word ask. I say to you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open. As it continues, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay, I've never said this in the first two, sir. We read the, come on, yeah, amen. Amen. We read the Word of God together. Uh, I've never um, said in the first two services, but isn't that funny how, you know, it's all about asking for bread for this and everything. And it ends with, no, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. No, I, I want a bike. No, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want a new home. Ah, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. I want some new shoes. Ah, how about the Holy Spirit? In other words... Ultimately, it all comes through the direction of the Lord, whatever it may be. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God and the children of God. So we need to be led by the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. That's a thought we never had in the first two messages. So that's what you get for coming to the third service. Hallelujah. Because you gave the devil your Saturday night. Just kidding. Okay. I'm just joking and I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I just love the Lord, and I know you do too. Now, I want y'all to help me. I want y'all to go from the A to the S to the K. Let's do it. From the A to the S to the K. Again. From the A to the S to the K. One more time. From the A to the S to the K. Now, when you study the Word of God and not just read it on the surface and you stay and eat it, things start popping. As you meditate upon the word, God starts to revelate in you and you start to see things you've never seen before. And it's powerful. When I was a young man, I bought a, uh, when I was a young teenager, I bought a book called The Joy of Discovery. It was only $3.99. That's how old I am. And uh, the book was a book on how to study the word of God and pull out revelation. And I'll talk more about how powerful that is in the second section here. But it was so cool this morning. Andrew Carroll, Pastor Andrew Carroll, who's on staff here and serves in discipleship, I believe, leadership. He came to me and says, you just need to know this. When uh, you did those summits, those massive events for young four-score youth back in the 80s and 90s, he said, my, I, I was too young to go, which made me feel super old. I was too young to go, but, but my brothers came home with a book you wrote called Bedroom Bible College, and I want you to know that book has affected my life. And I went, thank you, Jesus, for fruit that remains. That book exists because of another book I purchased called Joy Discovery because I learned how to read the word and pop it. Now, since then, I've, I've begun to color the word. I'm a colorist. And I don't even work at a salon. <laughs> My wife told me, colorists, those are people who work at salons. I wouldn't know I'm bald. I have nothing to color. I am a colorist, and so I love to color the Word of God, and I've had a lot of fun with that. And I've actually created some coloring books now for families. The latest one I've done is called the I Must Color Journal. My I Must Color Journal. And it's bubble art of God's Word. Bubble letters. And you color the Word, and content starts to become clarified. Along with the concept that whenever you color, you relax. Seriously, if you're in a mental state, color. No, if you're going crazy, just go color. Because coloring, they use it in therapy and in all that. Because coloring is so powerful. 
And of course, you know, being a typical preacher who has stuff that he's created, I actually have a book called The I Must Color Journal, and that's it right there. And there's someone in here that will commit to coloring this whole thing before Christmas. Who are you? I saw your hand first, ma'am. That means you get to come to the altar and receive the book. Hallelujah. There you go. Come on, give her a hand. <laughs> and I declare that will become a table tool in your home. That in fact, it might even cause connection to happen. And how about this politically correct word? Conversation. <laughs> Everyone wants to have a conversation. And I think that's cool. So that'll open up conversation. God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love it because the devil hates color. I believe he hates color. I think he's black and white. No, his, his is gray. 50, 50 shades of it. I mean, he's just gray. Okay. Why did I say that? I don't know. Okay. How many of you are knowing? This is why we only invite him. Okay. And so... Um, from the A to the S to the K, did you notice something? Yeah. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Canock! Canock! Canock, and it shall be. It's an acrostic. There's a progression here. I saw it when I meditated. A, ask. S, seek. K, knock. Or cannot. Isn't that cool? That's why the Bible's the best seller. And it's not because it's easy reading. It's because there's something on it that pulls out revelation that's just unreal. May your bedroom become a Bible college. May your devotions a delight. May your connection with God never go beyond 24 hours. For he gives us his daily bread, not our biannual loaf. Don't be an Easter Sunday Christian. Easter, Easter Christmas. A, ask. Here we go. I believe that ask will reveal the motives of your heart. Because God gives blank checks to Christians and sees what they'll do with it. And some are saying, what do you mean? Solomon had just sacrificed a thousand offerings. And God said to him that night, ask, what do you want me to give you? And Solomon responded by saying, I think we need to read it because it's pure scripture. Let's take a look at 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 2. I, you want that reference. 2 Chronicles 1 verse 2. And let me read it to you right now. 2 Chronicles 1. The turning of pages. So old school. Sure beats a new iPhone X. Come on somebody. <laughs> Let's keep it real, man. Neither of the services got that earlier this morning. Verse 6, And Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. Now, that'll attract the heart of God right there. I mean, a thousand burnt offerings. Here's the next verse. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give to you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to my David, my father, and have made me king in this place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now, give me... Inside information on the stock market. 
Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you and I will... Add or give to you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings who have had who were before you, nor shall any have after you in the like. If that isn't absolutely a total revelation of the motive of young Solomon's heart. And the Lord would say to all of us, I need a heart to work with if I'm going to add to what you've asked for even more. You see, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be. How many could use some addition? Come on. God says, if you'll do this, I'll give you that. If you're concerned about my stuff, I'll be concerned about yours. How many are thankful that Jesus or God said to Abe, no, to this man, ask. And it revealed the motives of his heart. Ask. Seek. I wish it was all about asking, don't you? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. He's going to bless me. He's going to bless me. I'm, I'm going to ask. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, ask and it shall be given. Okay, go home. No, he went on to say, seek and you shall find. How many would, wouldn't mind losing your wedding ring just to find it? <laughs> Some of you are looking at your wife. Mm. No, it's not, it's not a trick question. How many know when you lose something valuable and find it, it's a crazy emotion? Like, I don't know where mine is right now. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I put it at the sink. I think it's there. It's going to be there. I'm all right. <laughs> and it's almost worth it to lose it, to find it. Now, you don't have to go and lose something to find it. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like an archaeological dig. Have you seen those people, those archaeological people? They're crazy. They'll spend 30 years looking for the vertebrae of T-Rex. And when they find wrecks, they're like, ah, they're freaking out because they just sought and found. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Come on, you've heard preachers say it. It's true. God doesn't hide himself from you. He hides himself for you. And it's so true. I'll never forget when I was baptized in water at 14. When I came out of the water, I sensed the presence of the Father's blessing beyond description. I got dressed and I went into the balcony of the church and just speaking in heavenly language, I was just pacing back and forward. I was 14 years old. I was just, just I couldn't calm down. I just couldn't calm down. That's why I went to the balcony so I wouldn't bother people. It was a Sunday night service. And I'm in the balcony. Oh, God, oh, God. Finally, I just got it. I went into the service. I sat down. And 20 minutes later, he left me. Totally left me. And some are saying, young man, would you quit preaching? Pastor Steve, don't ask him again. He's preaching heresy. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't leave me. He was just playing a little divine hide and seek, not to tease me. Because we just sang that. <laughs> the bubblegum lyrics. <laughs> if you have a real good relationship with him, he might just leave you to tease you because you know that he's just having fun. <laughs> Do you know that God didn't come back for three months? I went into my bedroom. I says, God, I don't know where you are. I just got baptized and now I can't sense your presence anywhere. Oh, Jesus. Baptized. 
driven into the wilderness. I guess this is how it goes. When God blesses you with favor, he disappears so you can find him. He came back three months later. And I says, Almighty God, don't you ever do that again. (laughs) Because I can tell the difference between your presence and your absence. Unless you're the guy that killed people uh, with a jawbone. What's his name? Samson? The Bible says he didn't know whether God left him or not. You don't want to get there. Is God with me or not? I can't tell. When God came back to me at 14, I had already turned my bedroom into a Bible college. I was spending hours a day in the presence of the Lord. And that's why the book that Pastor Andrew Carroll blessed him, has blessed him because I went through that. God says, I'm not going to let you just be an asker. I'm going to make you a seeker. And you're going to seek my face. And I'll find out what you're like when you can't feel me to see if you can find me. Because God likes to ditch his people so they'll see what they do when, they, when, when, when he's around the corner. That's true. That's true. That's wisdom. That's, that, that's how it works in the kingdom. That's how it works. But it's for your good. It's for my good. He hides for you, not from you. That's the kingdom. That's the way it is. Even business people don't want a loser who just goes around asking, asking. Business, uh, pro, bosses are looking for seekers, people that seek, seek the answers. I'm going to prove it. Elijah was now going to not be the prophet anymore. And God said to Elijah, I've got a man for you. His name is Elisha. Put your mantle on Elisha. So he goes to Elisha and he puts his mantle on him and says, you know, what have I to do with you? It was kind of a moment where he just throws it on. I think Elijah kind of had an attitude, you know. And so he kind of, hey, you're going to get the mantle. I'm done. And the Bible says that Elisha killed his oxen. He had 12 yoke of oxen, which means he's a seeker. And he killed the animals, burned, burned, the, burned the wood of the yoke and, uh, and started following Elisha. We hardly have time for it, but you'll find it in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. 2 Kings chapter 2, 1 to 10. I'm taking more time on other parts then, so let me just, just give you the reference. But this is what happened. Elijah tries to ditch Elisha. Elijah is following Elisha because the word of the Lord is if you see him go, then you'll get the mantle that I just gave you. So Elisha starts following Elijah. Elijah says to Elisha, I am going to Bethel. Why don't you just stay here? Elisha says, you ain't getting rid of me like that. There's no way I'm leaving you for nothing. Oh, yeah, peace at work. And they keep on going. And he tries to ditch him again the third time. He tries, he says, I'm going, I'm going to go here, I'm going to Jericho. You just stay here. You will not get out of my sight. Oh, okay. Let's go. And he keeps on going. He did it three times. He tried to ditch Elisha. And then it comes to the end, and I will read it now. Second Cruise, Second Kings chapter 2, 1 to 10. Listen to what it says. They came to the end of their, of their journey there. And now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and it was divided this way and that. So the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah, the guy who's tried to ditch him three times, says to Elisha, Ask! Ask! Because there's an exclamation mark there. That's why I'm yelling. <laughs> ask! I can't get rid of you, so ask. What do you want? And Elisha says to Elijah, I want twice of what's on you on me. And you know what Elijah says? You have asked a hard thing. Elisha was a hard asker. Solomon was a wise asker. Because you'll never get it with just being wise. You got to go deep and do the hard things. 
hard asking. By the way, you know how many miracles Elisha did? Twice as many than Elijah minus one. He didn't quite make it and he died. They put him in the grave. And then there was a war going on and they threw a dead guy in his grave. And when the bones of the dead guy hit the bones of the dead guy, named Shah, the dead guy got up because of the dead guy's bones. And Eli Shah said from the heavens, well, I'm not there, but we made it. Because <laughs> obviously he was in heaven. <laughs> to be absent from the body, the people it was the Lord, but his bones were so filled with the glory of the Lord that the guy got up. Now that's what happens to people that are willing to ask the hard things that God would bring into their lives. We're almost done. K. Canuck. <laughs> Esther. Esther was the queen. The king had asked his previous wife to come to a party. She refused. He got offended. He says, if women find out that you disobeyed me, all the women in all the country will diss their husbands. So we're going to have to just diss you and you're out. How many are thankful you're living today? <laughs> and they then said, well, we need, we need you to have a queen. So let's just see if we can find a beautiful woman. And they went through the nation. They found all these beautiful women, whatever that means. And they brought queen, that, uh, queen not Vashti, that was the wife, Queen Esther. She got picked because I guess she was just something else. And when the king saw her, he says, you're really, you're, you're it. You're, you're just it. Because when God made Adam, he was only practicing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that was for all the men. Okay. And it's true. It's wonderful. She was beautiful. Well, what had happened was the king had an associate named Haman who he had elevated to phenomenal, prominent positions. Haman was a mean guy. Haman was a man filled with pride. And Haman could not stand this one man who would not bow to him when he came by. His name was Mordecai. He was the dad, the surrogate dad. He was the uncle of Queen Esther, Mordecai. And Mordecai would not, because he had the I must spirit. He says, I will not bow to you and worship you. I worship one God and God alone. This man was a little different. This man was the real deal, Mordecai. So Haman says, you know, who is this guy? Found out he was a Jew and says, you know what? I, want, I don't want to kill you. I want to kill all your people. I'm going to wipe your country out. And so guess what happened? The king said, okay, yeah. Whoever these people are, if they're not obeying me, yeah, let's get rid of them. It was horrible then. Signet ring, they did it. Mordecai sent a message to Queen Esther. Queen Esther, there's been a message sent. All of us are dead. It's coming up. They're going to kill us all in one day. And honey, you're one of us. They don't know that right now. That's how you even got in there. But I'm going to tell you right now, you will not escape this because she was in denial. And then he says, come on. And then he said this, are you ready? Who knows if you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Because you see, when you ask wise you, 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 it reveals your motive. When you ask deep, it reveals your measure, the measure of your, of your life. The measure of Elisha was twice the measure of Elijah. But when you ask, well, let me tell you what happened. Here we are, we're almost done. So this message went out and she came alive and she said, you know what? Who knows if I haven't come to the kingdom for such a time as this? My, my uncle, my father, my, 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 the guy who's looking after me told me that. And, and, and she switched and she says, okay, go, go. Tell everyone to fast for three days. And I'm going to go in and stand before the king, which is against the rules. And if I stand before the king and he does not receive me, I will be killed. And then she said these beautiful words that are the only people that change the world. If I perish, I perish. Who cares? That's who changes the world. And so you know what she did? She fasted for three days. And then she became the Kanaker. She came before the king without an invitation. 
And when the king saw her, he says, that's my girl. And he chose not to kill her. She touched his signet thing. And the king looked at her. He says, ask. Up to half the kingdom is yours. And she said, can we do lunch? If I was asked for half the kingdom, I'd do more than ask for lunch. But she was a smart asker. Because she understood God was behind the scenes doing something. And she had to just wait. She says, and bring Haman with you for lunch. Haman got filled with pride. I'm going to the White House. I'm having lunch with the president and his wife. He got in there, got all pumped up. And then he went home and told his wife he had just had lunch. But on the way home, Mordecai would not bow. And all the joy of lunch with the king and the queen became total taken away because of his pride over a man who would not bow to him. He went home and told his wife and his friends. He says, you know what? I had lunch with the king and the queen today. I am amazing. But then I come outside, this guy disses me. And I just can't have it. And his wife says, I just why don't you go make some gallows in the back? And, and when you go back for lunch tomorrow, because she then said, what do you, can we have lunch again? When you go back for lunch tomorrow, what you're going to do is you're going to um, ask him to hang this guy on the gallows. He says, okay, let's go build the gallows. That night, that night, the king could not sleep. Okay, how many think God could be a string puller? Come on. He's also just and he's righteous. So whenever he pulls the strings, it's never manipulation in a wrong way. You understand that? How many sense God's behind the scenes pulling stuff off here? Come on, come on, come on. How many want God behind the scenes in your life pulling stuff off here, here, here? Come on. Look at this. That night the king could not sleep. It's the first verse of Esther chapter 6. That night the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring a book of the records of the Chronicles, for they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, 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 you know those guys, the doorkeeper who had sought to lay hands on kings and Xerxes. Then the king said, what honor or dignity has been bestowed on, bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. Who's getting ready to have lunch that same day with Haman, who Haman would say, take Mordecai and put him on the gallows? Haman. Who couldn't sleep? The king. What did he have done? Had a book read. Whose name was mentioned in the book? Mordecai. Listen to the next verse. So the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that had been prepared for him. The king's servant said to him, Haman is there standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in and the king asked him, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, you got to read the word with a growl sometimes. <laughs> now Haman thought in his heart, who would the king delight in more than me? This guy's a piece of work. So Haman came in, who would delight more? And Haman answered the king, for whom the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought on which the king is worn, and a horse on which the king is ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor me. I 
think it's me. Then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, it shall be done to the king, a man who honors the king and honors, delights to honor. Then the king said to Haman, hurry, take the robe and the horses you have suggested and do so for you, not do so for Mordecai, the Jew who sits within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone that you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square and proclaimed before him, the Syrian, the king who honors the king. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. Because this is the real dude. I've just been honored like crazy, but now I'm just going to go back to what I was doing before I was honored like crazy. But Haman hurried home to his house mourning and his head covered. Then Haman told his wife and all his friends everything that had happened to him. And his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. And while they were still talking, the king's Enoch's came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet with Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went in to dine with Queen Esther. This is crazy stuff. Again, the king said at the banquet, ask up to half my kingdom. And she said, now it's time to really ask the question. I want my people saved. They're up for execution all over the land. The king's like, what? Through who? Ham. Ham right there. The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther pleading for his life for he saw that evil was determined against him by the gang. When the king returned from the palace garden to the palace of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king says, will he also assault my wife while I am in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now, Harbona, one of the Enochs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman has made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman, let the king, and the king said, Hang him on it. And so they hanged Haman. His name kind of goes with hanging, you know. Haman hanging. Haman the hanger. On the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was subsided because of a woman who was a smart asker because she had submitted herself to the Spirit of God. We've gone longer than usual. I'm going to move very quickly. This church is a big church in the ask category. There's a passion here to ask for God to do things beyond our understanding. And because you're under the leadership of this house that wants to God to use them beyond measure, I declare there's a big ask in you. Hallelujah. 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 As their heads are bowed. You may be here today and you're saying, you know, Pastor, I just, I, I've never asked Jesus to actually come into my life and make me and, and, and him be my Lord. And today, I just know that today's my day. If that's you, can I pray for you right where you're at? I'm just going to ask you to signify it with a raised hand. If your hand goes up, I'll agree with you that today's your day when you ask the Lord for salvation. If that's you at the count of three, just raise your hand. One two. Don't be afraid. You may have come with a friend. You know you're not right with God. Three. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. There's young and old alike. Someone with two hands raised. 
could we agree with these that have raised their hands now? All of us pray this simple prayer. If it comes from your heart, it'll reach the heart of God. Here we go. Lord Jesus, I've raised my hand in the midst of your people today. I ask you to come into my life. Cleanse me of my sin. Set me free. I will serve you and know you. I will not be a task-oriented Christian. I will be an ask-oriented Christian also. Use me, Jesus. Father, I thank you for that simple confession of faith. And may this confession become a possession in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Has it been good to be in the house of the Lord? Let me have some more stuff. This is the book right here that I wrote that changed the life of one of your pastors. It shows you how to dig into the Word of God. They're available if you want to get one. We sold out because I only brought a few of them with me. But we'll have it for you at the church next week if you want to come. And this is my newest coloring book. <laughs> I just love it. You just color the Word. And your kids will not even know it. Come on, let's color. Come on, Mickey Mouse is fun to color, but why not color the Word? Amen? Amen? Is there a family in the house that says, I need that book? I saw your hand first, sir. Would you give it to that gentleman right there? I speak it in Jesus' name. And may your table be anointed. You know, we believe in the table principle here. Debbie Titus, we believe that the table is, is the most important piece of furniture in the home. And I declare that'll be a table tool. And you all need table tools in your life. Amen? And then books on how to study the Bible for kids 12 and under. This one here is for all of us, but this one here is for kids 12 and under. BBC, Bedroom Bible College. I don't know who needs this book, but you better... Come on, honey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, grab her. Yeah, yeah. I use this one every day. It's the Give God 12 Journal. I challenge kids to give God 12 minutes a day. God bless you, girl. You're awesome. <laughs> Hey, hey, come here. Would you give this one to one of your friends? That's got 21 stories in it of lives changed at 12 throughout history. Rembrandt, Louis Braille, Mother Teresa, Billy Graham. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff is available. I got to keep that book because the last one we have, and then we have, and look at this, I have two of these here in Spanish. Yorobo. I must. I don't know who needs this shirt. But would you please raise your hand? Thank you, ma'am. I see your hand waving. Come to the altar, the T-shirt altar. Okay. And then we have other shirts back there. I must bright neon colors for kids along with adult shirts that just say things like, I must on them in a more subdued fashion. I want you to know, sir, if you wear this, people will ask you, I must what? <laughs> and you know what you will have, sir? An answer, an answer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, congregation. I love this house.